Great. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining. I know we still have a couple stragglers coming in, so please find a seat. As Liz said, there's lots of space over on this other side over here. If you feel like you're comfortable sitting on the floor, there's lots of cozy space, and hopefully you've had a chance to get some snacks and settled in. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Hannah Hill, and I am very, very honored to be the MC tonight for Paula Palooza! And it's great to see a lot of familiar faces. I know I got a chance to reconnect with some folks from my era. Hopefully you've had a chance to meet other new Grable alumni here. There's lots of folks in the building uh, and lots of friends and family of Paul who have traveled quite a distance to be here. So thank you all for taking time out of your Friday evening to be with us. Um, and thank you to, for also wearing ties. And Paul, I actually didn't know why you wore a tie until earlier this evening and someone told me so you might have to confirm if this is true or not, that when you first started working at Grable, you had to wear a tie so that you wouldn't blend in with the students. <laughs> He's nodding. Yeah, he didn't want to look like one of the students. He was very much a professional. Um, and we have lots of Paul's ties hanging here tonight. Um, and it's a real tie theme we got going on. Now, you might be wondering why I was asked to MC this event. And I feel it's partially because Paul and I have gotten to know each other really well throughout the years. We first met at a May U at Waterloo open house. It was right on the patio at that door. I remember walking up with my parents and we met this wonderful in person named Paul. And then I applied to Grable, went through the interview process, and I found out I was an OCR. And I have to admit, I was a little bit disappointed. But then I got an invitation to go live with Paul and Dolores at their home, and it made up for it. And I had a wonderful term living there. And a couple weeks into the term, Paul came up to me and he said, I know you're still new, and I know you're still a student and figuring things out, but what do you think about joining a, a committee at Grable all about the kitchen and dining room and doing a renovation of it? And I said, okay, Paul, and here we are. So many years later, in the kitchen and dining room that we got to work together on. Uh, I also have lots of memories watching Leafs games with you and Dolores, um, and my husband, Alroy, and I go for lots of walks with you as well. So there's lots of touch points, and I was very touched to ask to MC this evening. And of course, with being MC comes with getting to share a little bit of the housekeeping for the evening. So if you haven't already, there is lots of food. Please help yourself between acts. Uh, there's lots of different stations. If you haven't found the ice cream station yet, it's in the back. Um, if you have any dirty dishes, they go in the carts by the dish room, which I had to get acquainted with is now over this way. Uh, and of course, please take lots of photos and videos and cheer on our acts in between. We've got a really, really great lineup tonight. Um, when we first started planning this event, Paul, you know, you love music and plays, so we knew that had to be a big part of tonight. I have a question. Have you ever missed an end of term banquet or a talent show that has come with it? Uh, I think I missed two. Two. Can you believe that? In so many years at Grable. So it seems really, really fitting that we had a talent show tonight. We know that you and Dolores love going to Mervis shows together. Um, and most importantly, when I was talking to Paul about his party, he said, it's not a celebration of me. It's a celebration of all the wonderful people in the room. So know that you are also being celebrated tonight. <laughs> Woohoo! I have an exact quote. It was, it's not about what I've accomplished, but what we've accomplished together. Thank you, Paul. All right, without further ado, I have the honor of introducing our first act of current Grable students. So we got to live the tradition on and start young here. So we have Sela, Joel, and Colin, and they are a folk trio here at Grable. Um, Cole, Colin and Joel met in their first year and then got to know Sela later on. Um, they play at a lot of coffee houses, is that right? Uh, basically everyone. <laughs> <laughs> So we're very fortunate to have them tonight. They also lived with Paul and Dolores. We have that in common, I found out. Um, and they used to practice together, so they're gonna share uh, some of their songs with you this evening. So without further ado. <laughs> You good? All right. There 
a storm across the valley Clouds are rolling in The afternoon is heavy on your shoulders There's a truck out on the four lane A mile or more away And the whining of his wheels just makes it colder an hour away from riding on your prayers up in the sky and ten days on the road are barely gone there's a fire softly burning suppers on the stove it's the light in your eyes that makes him warm It's good to be back home again Sometimes this old farm feels like a long lost friend Yeah, hey, it's good to be back home again like a long lost friend Yeah, hey, it's good to be back home again An old time that I can lay this tired old body down And feel your fingers feather soft upon me The kisses that I live for my way The happiness that living with you brings me Well it's the sweetest thing I know Just spending time with you It's the little things that make a house a home Like a fire softly burning Supper on the stove It's the light in your eyes That makes me warm Hey, it's good to be back home again Sometimes this old farm Feels like a long lost friend Yes, it is. Sometimes this old car feels like a long lost friend. Yeah, hey, it's good to be back home again. Back Home Again by John Denver. <laughs> and the next song we're going to be playing is one that Joel wrote. Um, it's about living your life well and living your life in a way that you can be proud of. And I think we just, Paul, you can be so proud of everything that you've done for Grable and the way you've lived your life and the way you've served this community. So um, that's why we're singing this song today. <laughs> I'm leaving 
But when I die, I wanna go with my head held tight. Right now I'm living. But when I die, I wanna go with my head held tight. When they lay my body in the ground. When they lay my body in the ground. Side from my speaking, I won't even make a sound. When they lay my body in the ground. Right now I'm here. But when I die, I wanna go with my head held high. Right now I'm here. one more song for you and it's another one that I wrote. I actually wrote this song in Paul Penner's house. Um, <laughs> as was said earlier, Colin and I lived there for a lovely term with Paul and Dolores and uh, I was thinking about the fact that uh, with everyone you meet you eventually see them for the last time and that thought made me sad and I don't think this is the last time I will see Paul Penner. I'm quite certain it is not. <laughs> um, but nonetheless it's a, it's a song that I wrote about saying goodbye to people um, and hoping the best for them. And also thinking about how in lots of languages there are words for goodbye mean until we see you again, like au revoir or auf Wiedersehen, both mean um, until we meet again. And sometimes that's not true. Um, you do meet everyone for the last time. But, um, <laughs> so it's a little bit sad, but it's also just kind of a lovely and nice song, and I hope it will not make you sad. <laughs> this is called Consider This Farewell. Consider this farewell God bless the road that walks beneath your feet May you be warm, be kind Some meaning may you find And may your morning coffee never be too sweet Once more we'll never talk Take this as goodbye God willing may your burden be eased May you be loved, be fed May you sleep in a good May someone always bless you when you sneeze. you as you go. May you 
have friends and find a love that brings you peace like Noah's love. May you never get your car stuck in the snow. This isn't au revoir, it's not our feet as in. I do not mean until we meet again. No, I don't know who you are, I know that us has come this far. It's just you and I until the story ends. So if we never meet again, consider this farewell. God be with you till you die. May you find comfort, may you rest, may your days and years be blessed. May you always have the chance to say goodbye. May you find comfort, may you rest, may your days and years be blessed. And may you always have the chance to say goodbye. If you know this but we actually have a VIP box of tissues up here if anyone needs I don't know if Paul might use up the entire box so <laughs> we're already at act one and here we go <laughs> so between acts while we have people kind of transitioning I was thinking back to lots of memories of Paul and thought hmm, maybe we should do some trivia and we also have a chance to share some memories in between as well that people have submitted but let's start off with some trivia and maybe, I think we need to do a practice round, so I've started nice and easy. Uh, and just shout out your answers, I, and hopefully nice and loud in case we can't hear you. It's not a competition, I unfortunately don't have a prize, but uh, hopefully we'll get some fun ones. So practice question. What is Paul's favorite hockey team? <laughs> Someone said the Winnipeg Jets, but uh, <laughs> as you can tell by the time I'm wearing, uh, Paul is a very big Leafs fan. Another question I actually had to get Dolores' help on answering, and I didn't know the answer to, was before Grable, what was Paul's first job? <laughs> St. Clair O'Connor? Below? Maybe younger? Think about some of the childhood or maybe, you know, high school jobs you might have. McDonald's? McDonald's? Close? That's right, he did. Paul delivered catalogs, the Eaton's catalogs. Unfortunately, I wasn't old enough to quite know what those were. I had to Google. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. It's a bit of a roast tonight, too, unfortunately. This one, as I got to know Paul better and we started to email, I realized Paul has a signature line that he uses, or this is how he signs off his emails. Does anyone else know? EP2, yeah. And what does that stand for, Paul, for everyone who doesn't know? It's P times two. Oh, P times two. E Paul Penner. E Paul Penner. Thank you, Paul. What does E stand for? Earnest. Yes, <laughs> the importance of being earnest. All right, I got one more before our wonderful next act here. Thank you. Um, as you know, we have lots of ties hanging here and around the room, and those ones are actually some of Paul's, so this might help you with the next question. How many ties do you think Paul owns. Enough. <laughs> enough. A retirement, I heard. Enough for retirement, maybe. Can you, a number guess. I'm hearing 60s, 150s. Someone said 97. I think that's probably the closest. Yeah. Dolores guessed there was probably about 100 and about 60 are here on display. And then I don't know what you're going to do with the other 40 <laughs> in retirement. Just keep wearing them, hopefully. Sounds like I'm going to a funeral. Oh, <laughs> maybe at funerals is what Paul is saying. Uh, on a lighter note, we have the wonderful bearded baritones up next here. We have Dan, Doug, Josh, and Jake, and they've been singing together since 2008, and they're part of the Water Boys, which actually I did know. I didn't have to Google that one. Um, and they are U Waterloo alum and lived at Grable together and are going to share a few songs tonight. So let's welcome them. Ooh, 
I dreamed last night I got on the boat to heaven And by some chance I had brought my dice along And there I stood and I hollered someone fade me But the passengers they knew right from wrong Right from wrong For the people all said sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat People all said, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. And the devil will drag you under by the shark, the pal on your checkered coat. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. Sit down, you're rocking the boat, rocking the boat, rocking the boat, rocking the boat, rocking the boat. Well, I sailed away on that little boat to heaven, and by some chance found a bottle in my fist. And there I stood, nicely passing out the whiskey. But the passengers were bound to resist. Bound to resist. For the people all said, beware, you're on a heavenly trip. People all said, beware, beware, you'll scuttle the ship. And the devil ah. will drag you under by the fancy tie around your wicked throat. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. Sit down, you're rocking the boat, rocking the boat, rocking the boat, rocking the boat. A great big wave washed me overboard And as I sank and I hollered someone save me That's the moment I woke up Thank the Lord Thank the Lord Thank the I said to myself, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. Said to myself, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. And the devil won't drag you under with a soul so heavy you'd never float. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. The devil will get you if you don't sit down. And if you go, you're sure to drown. Sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat, rocking the boat. Sit down, you're rocking the boat. Uh, it's very fun to be here. It's very fun to be back at Grable after after many years away. I'll, we sang a community supper in the fall, but it's been, it's great to be back for this event. Um, this next song uh, is one that we did at coffee houses here at Grable, I don't know, 13, 14, 15 years ago. Um, this is a real fun one. Uh, this is King of Spain. Mm. Oh, once I was the King of Spain. Now I eat humble pie. Oh, my unspeakable wife, Queen Lisa. Now I eat. Humble pie. I'm telling you I was the king of Spain. Now I eat humble pie. And now I work at a pizza pizza. One, two, three, four. Ba da ba ba da. Ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da ba ba da. Ba ba da ba. Royalty, Lord, it looks good on me. Buried in silk in the royal boudoir, or going nuclear free, or playing broken no with the princess of Monaco. Telling my jokes to the effect leader. Getting it all on video. Once I was the king of Spain, now I eat humble pie. A palatial palace, that was my home. Now I eat humble pie. I'm telling you, I was the king of Spain. Now I eat humble pie. And now I vacuum the turf at Sky Dome. Once he was the king of Spain. Ba da ba ba da ba ba da ba. I can't wait. I'm lowering interest rates, and my people say, King, why are you such a genius? There's a roof overhead and food on our plate. It's laissez-faire. I don't even give a care. Let's make Friday part to the weekend and give every new baby chocolate eclair. Once I was the king of Spain, now I eat humble pie. When the other world leaders got problems, they phone me. Now I eat humble pie. I'm telling you, I was the king of Spain. Now I eat humble pie. Now the Leafs call me up to drive the Zamboni. Once he was the king of Spain. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you the International Orchestra.
Now, some of you might be wondering how I came to be living here in Canada after being royalty in Spain. Shall I tell them, guys? Tell us, kings. You see, late one night, when the palace was asleep, out of my royal chambers and down to the garden I creep. There I wait to the appointed time when the moon is lighting the pitch, at which point my peasant friend, who looks just like me, arrives and we make a switch. Prince and popper, junior and whopper, world made up of silver and copper, under my oval is shine. I took a change of position. So next time, you drool in the pizza line. Remember, slower pizza's more luscious. The king of Spain never rushes. Once I was the king of Spain, now I eat humble pie. I love to lounge around on my royal throne. Now I eat humble pie. I'm telling you I was the king of Spain. Now I eat humble pie. And now I jam with the bearded baritone. Once he was the king of Spain. Well, we'll finish this off with uh, a barbershop. Uh, I think it's really classic for barbershop songs to be about like love and feelings and love that's not necessarily requited. Um, so this is in that great tradition. Uh, this is if I can't call you mine. William Shakespeare said, <coughs> "A rose is a rose by any." wholeheartedly with Mr. Shakespeare's claim for I'm in love with a wonderful girl and I don't know her name yet if someday she asks me why I'll reply Sweet refrain. I don't want to call you anything at all if I can't call you mine. Though it would be a shame, I don't want to know your name if I can't call you mine. All mine. I don't give a darn what your mom and daddy named you when you were by my side. You know that I don't even care if your name is Ethelinda. If you'll be my bride, I know that if you wear my ring, I'll be certain of one thing. The sun will always shine. But I don't want to call you anything at all if I can't call you mine. You know that if you wear my ring, I'll be certain of one thing. The sun will always shine. call you anything at all if I can't call you all of the time you know that I don't want to walk without you I don't want to talk without you I just want to call you Amazing. Thank you, bearded bearded tones. There's a slight beard. Paul is inspecting the beards <laughs> of the bearded bearded tones. <laughs> uh, it's amazing how many people stay in touch over the years. You know, like I said, we have lots of alumni in the room. Um, and Paul himself was a student once at Grable. I met a few of his uh, fellow era students as well tonight. Uh, Paul's kids also, uh, one in specifically Dan, had a chance to come to Grable and be a student here uh, and see some of Paul's antics throughout the years. And unfortunately, Dan and Katie are enjoying sunny, sunny Mexico, but they wanted to send a little bit of a video message. So if, if we got this queued up, we'd love to share that with you now. Hi, Dad. Hello, everybody at Palapalooza. We're really sorry that we couldn't be there in person, but we are at a beach in Mexico in our camper van, and I think that that's the second best place to be tonight. 
A special memory I have of you at Grable was visiting your office when I was a kid. You had a woodpecker door knocker, a brick shaped foam stress ball that was on your shelf. There was this ceramic light up village set that was on your desk and an adding machine. It was basically a, a calculator where you could print out what you typed in on receipt paper. It was all very fun to play with as a kid, but I did get in trouble when I used too much receipt paper. Um, the, but I think the best part of everything was the computer games that you had installed just for us kids. There was a magic school bus game where you had to figure out which planet Miss Frizzle was on. It was fun, but a little too educational. Um, but my favorite game was the Captain Crunch game. I could have spent hours in the caves mining for cereal pieces with the Crunchlings. <laughs> uh, you took an effort to make your office an inviting place for everyone who visited. As a kid, I understood that Grable was a special place for you, and once I got a little older and eventually attended Grable myself, I understood why. And Paul, I first got to know you outside of the context of Grable, so for the first few years of knowing you, I just thought of you as Dan's dad. But I remember so clearly one of my first community suppers as a Grable student, you had been asked to become a part of an announcement. I don't know what it was for, but you walked out to this song that was very popular at the time and very funny. It went like this. Interior crocodile alligator. I drive a Chevrolet movie theater. And of course, all the students went wild. They thought it was hilarious. And that's when I realized that you're kind of famous at Grable. Like people really loved you there. Um, and so that's when I sort of got to know the Paul Penner of Grable and not just the Paul Penner of Dan's family. Happy retirement and enjoy the rest of Paula Palooza. And in case you missed it while the house lights were down, we still have the calculator with the receipt paper. And Paul, I was told you were still using this. I, I have to know what for, come find me later. And hopefully you weren't using too much receipt paper. Because clearly Dan still got something there with you. <laughs> we are fortunate to have Nick in the house tonight and um, Paul and Dolores' other daughter, Allison, couldn't make it, but Nick has agreed to share a, a special memory on their behalf as well. So come on up, Nick. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm Nick Penner, I'm one of Paul's three kids, although I think it's much more accurate to say that uh, me and my siblings are three of his thousands of kids, because uh, I think everyone who went to Grable is, is really one of his kids, uh, and that includes profs and staff. I, I think they all fall under that, that same sort of blanket of, of, of child. Growing up, it really did feel like we had thousands of secret siblings throughout the world. Uh, I cannot count how many times a, a family dinner or a trip or an outing was disrupted when my dad saw someone who he knew who had some connection to Grable and then he had to talk to them about what they were up to and what they were doing and how their family was and uh, every, every single time. So it, it really did feel like we were part of this magical secret network throughout the world. Uh, my other favorite time in the year was my dad's busiest time at work which was September with move-in day and the dawns jumping out and everything happening and of course the all-college retreat. The highlight of which was when we got to as kids ride in the back of the van with the mattresses while my dad drove all over Silver Lake camp and we were just bouncing around in the back. I, I wasn't sure if I can tell that story, but I don't think you can get in trouble with HR at this point now that you're retired, so, so it's off the books. Uh, there is a great scene in the movie Lady Bird, uh, a movie I know my dad has not seen because it's not 30 years old, uh, but there, there's a great scene in that 2017 movie where the character of Lady Bird is talking with, with her mentor and, and she's talking about her feelings about the city of Sacramento and she says she doesn't love it, she just pays attention to it. Uh, and her mentor says, well, don't you think those two are, are maybe the same thing, love and attention? Uh, and I think when you look at my, my dad's relationship with Grable, I, I think that spirit is really carried through because I think if you look at the friendships and the relationships he built here, if you look at the, the care he took for the physical space and, and the centrality of this community to his life, I think it's really how he showed his love through his attention uh, and the best part of retiring is now you have so much free time for when all that love comes back to you tenfold so uh, I, I remember dad once distinctly you told me that the definition of hard work is, is working until the job is done and I think we can all safely say that the job has been done and, and done very well so thank you very much
can confirm the VIP tissues are being used. <laughs> so our next act goes back to the early 2000s when they described themselves as young and maybe a little bit foolish. Uh, and they were asked to perform some sort of skit at a term and banquet, and they couldn't remember exactly what it was about. We have a photo of it to share. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, thankfully Mary, even in her retirement, has really pulled through and she remembered the song that they were doing whatever this was to, uh, called Splish Splash. And it was Fred's idea to reconstruct this, so we can thank Fred for what's about to happen. <laughs> Mary said, um, the times have changed and they weren't going to put a half-naked Paul Penner into a tub, so it's okay. <laughs> this is going to be kept PG. Um, I don't really know what else to say, so please enjoy this new version. <laughs> Check, check. Checking. Go check your microphone. Your shirt. Okay. Ready? <laughs> splish, splash, I was taking a bath. Long about a Saturday night. Yeah. A rub dub, just relaxing in the tub. Thinking everything. Paul Penner. Paul, Paul, yeah, yeah, Paul, it's Mary. I'm calling from the Grable Chapel. Um, sorry to bug you on a Saturday night, but you know what? Ed Jansen is up to his shenanigans again. He's lighting candles in the chapel, and I've told him not to do that. But does he listen? No, he doesn't listen. He was doing a homily, you know, justice for the geese on campus, and he, he threw his arm you know, like a wing, and knocked over the Christ candle, which set on fire the wonderful thing that was on the altar. And as we're just, it's up in smoke. Paul, come, quick, come. I'll be right there. Paul, was first. <laughs> splish splash, I was taking a bath Long about a Saturday night yeah. A rough dub, just relaxing in the tub Thinking everything was alright Paul Penner Hi Paul Sherry Sorry to bug you on a Saturday night at home. I got a bit of a situation here. We have um, like 200 people in the dining room for the Wallenstein Feed Christmas Banquet, and there's water gushing down from the ceiling into the salad bar area. True story. And I don't quite know what to do, so can you please come help me, please? I'll be right there. <laughs> I was taking a bath Long about a Saturday night yeah. A rough dub Just relaxing in the tub Thinking everything was alright Paul Penner Yeah Paul, it's the campus host calling We have an intruder at the college Right now, they're in the president's office, in Marcus' office, he's taken hostage, a number of students. <laughs> now just listen up, you gotta have the detail here, because you, you have to come in carefully. Go in the front doors. We're told he's dressed in a crazy outfit, you know, the kind that the faculty wear at, convent, at convocation, with those crazy hats and gowns. I'm told his name, I think his first name is, is uh, Pilgrim. Pilgrim Marpeck, that's what it is, and yes, 
they, they'll only let the people out of, out of hostage if, if Marcus renames the college to Marpeck College. <laughs> so Paul, is this a crisis? Come, quick. I'll be right there. I was taking a bath Long about a Saturday night yeah. Rubbed up Just relaxing in the tub Thinking everything was alright Well, I stepped out the tub Put my feet on the floor I wrapped a towel around me And I opened the door And in a splish splash I jumped back in the bath Paul, what are you doing in the tub? There's a party what? here. What? Come on out for the party. Oh boy. Right and there. everybody out. There's a party going on. Come on, folks. I don't know there was everybody a party. Out. something else. I think I didn't get to see the original rendition. I don't know if anyone in the audience did, but I like this new and improved one. And I do hope you're able to put your phone down a little bit more in retirement. This next trivia question feels a little bit remiss as it seems like we had some of the scenarios mentioned here, but I'm still going to ask it anyway. Um, as a former Dawn, during Dawn week, we would have a session with Paul that we all looked forward to, and it was called Scenarios When You Better Call Paul. <laughs> and I'm wondering if there's, you know, any former Dawns in the house tonight or anyone who has had a chance to, to, <laughs> to make that unfortunate phone call to Paul and maybe has one or two, you know, phone calls they could share really quickly. Alex, I'm looking at you only because you're in my, my year, but any, any favorite call, Better Call Paul stories? Oh, Maddie, you've got one. Come on up. <laughs> this wasn't even pre-planned. No, I've just been thinking about my Paul stories, and so this one came out last weekend. I was a Don in 2017, <laughs> um, and it was probably a Saturday night. It was, an, it was an evening for sure, and I noticed my co-don, Andrew Kuhn, is in the men's washroom on the fourth floor, and he's, he, I walk past and he sort of calls me in because the shower won't stop. It's just going. So we're like, oh, what are we gonna do? Andrew's soaking wet. He's tried everything to turn <laughs> off the shower, and it won't turn off. So I tell Andrew, you know, we gotta call Paul. Yeah. So we call Paul, it's late in the evening and he comes walking down the street into Gravel. He takes one look at the shower and a soaking wet Andrew and Paul, I kid you not, punched the shower handle and it turned off. <laughs> 
He saved the day. He said, okay, we'll talk about this in the morning and walk back home. <laughs> Thank you, Paul, for always being available. <laughs> I have a favorite memory, too, of Paul punching things. I hate to say this. But the radiators in the residence, sometimes when they first get going for the, for the term, they don't, the water doesn't flow down. And you would always give us a mallet, and you would say, go bang the pipes. <laughs> so there's something about, yeah, the water systems here that not your problem anymore, at least. As you know, Paul and Dolores also have hosted maybe a lot of comedy classic nights throughout the years. This is a bit more of a recent tradition, so I'm looking at all of these wonderful friends in the front. Can you name some of the movies that you've had a chance to see at Paul and Dolores' house? Say that again, Bunny? Bunny. Funny Girl? Monty Python. Monty Python, yes. Family Hill. What was that one again? Oh, yes, yeah, Send Me No Flowers. I have a huge list here, so I'm trying to... And Christmas vacation. Christmas vacation. That was a recent one. Any others? There's a huge list here. What's up, Doc? Nine to five. The goodbye girl. As as Nick said at best, it has to be at least 30 years old to be shown at these things. <laughs> We have another wonderful act lined up. We have Dan Root and Laura Enns, um, and they are also another Grable alumni duo who have been playing together since 2009. They're both international development students, woohoo, faculty of environment, uh, and they also came from Pennsylvania, and when they were doing a term together in Peru as part of their studies, they became really close musicians, and they've actually published, or sorry, produced two albums. So you can hit them up on Spotify afterwards, hopefully they're on there. Uh, and we're going to welcome, oh, they're not, sorry. <laughs> Find them on your local streaming provider wherever best. Come talk to them after. <laughs> I'm going to welcome them up to share some, some music with us. Thank you. And maybe while they're setting up, Laura, I forgot to share your favorite memory of Paul. So Laura works at the Brubaker House. Um, and during COVID, I guess you and Paul were having a conversation. And Paul said, there's not enough pranks happening at Grable during the pandemic. And so one of Laura's hopes for you in retirement is maybe you'll come back to Grable and pull some pranks off. <laughs> and you won't even have to clean them up now either. Yeah, you can go to the Brubaker House and <laughs> pull some pranks there. Thanks for that memory. Hello, everyone. It's great to be back. Uh, great to see so many familiar faces. And yeah, we'll play some songs from back in the day. Hopefully, we still remember them. <laughs> OK.
So it's been, it's been probably, I don't know, 10, 15 years since we've uh, played at a, a Grable talent show. <laughs> but one thing that we were always known for back in the day, well there were two things actually and they kind of went hand in hand. The one was always retuning on stage and the second one was never having any pre-planned pre uh, jokes or just general <laughs> stage charisma <laughs> to, to cover the awkward moments when I retune. Um, so, talk amongst yourselves. We also didn't plan any introductions to any of the songs, so. This, this is a song from our first album.
One final song. This song uh, was our uh, our biggest hit that we ever wrote, <laughs> by far. It's a song about a certain highway in southern Ontario. Um, we don't know what you're going to do without that commute anymore, Paul. <laughs> yeah, this is. You can. Uh, this one's also a little bit of a sing along. So if you know it, sing along. It's got a chorus. Uh, hopefully, by the end, you've figured out how it goes. It runs east from Windsor Through old London town Past Woodstock and Kitchener There's no slowing down Towards Ajax and Kingston And Belmontreal But we've just hit Toronto Now we can't move at all So it's about yourself down Keep a foot on the ground We've got many a slow mile Till we leave this sad town We've got old friends to greet And chores to get done But we're stuck in the fast lane On the damn 401 Well, 
I've traveled on freeways across this great land, seen the Rockies and the Maritimes and the Boreal stands. But today I've got concrete and parking lots too, and billboards and box balls and cars crowd the view, and it spelled yourself down. Keep a foot on the ground, we've got many a slow mile Till we leave this sad town We've got old friends to greet and chores to get done But we're stuck in the fast lane on the damn 401 Soaring like eagles, now we're trapped in a maze And I've not made a single friend traveling this way There's 15 close calls, could have killed me today But I was born on a back road and I'll die that way Then it spelled yourself down, keep a foot on the ground We've got many a slow mile Till we leave this sad town We've got old friends to greet And chores to get done But we're stuck in the fast lane On the damn 401 It's a hungry young creature This networked machine An efficient new feature Of society's dreams and it's growing forever and it's only begun but we're black in the veins now and smog in the lungs and it spelled yourself down keep a foot on the ground we've got many a slow mile till we leave this sad town we've got old friends to greet and chores to get done but we're stuck in the fast lane on the damn 401 and it's belt yourself down keep a foot on the ground we've got many a slow mile till we leave this sad town we've got old friends to greet and chores to get done but we're stuck in the fast lane on the damn 401 Thank you, Laura and Dan. That damn 401, eh? But I have a feeling Paul's going to be spending some time on it still on his many trips to Toronto for Leafs games and, and for more plays and musicals to come. So thank you for sharing with us. We've had a great variety of acts tonight. Uh, lots of wonderful folk and, and all sorts of varieties. Um, before I invite Marcus up to share a couple words, an intermission is coming, so I just wanted to share again a few announcements. Be sure to mingle during the intermission. That is first and most important. Paul specifically told us he does not want a sit down event. So you've been sitting down for too long. After this, we'll have a brief intermission. Again, there is still lots of food around the room. Because we are at Grable, there is always lots of food around. Please help yourself. If you're looking for a washroom, there are some just out these doors and to the left, as well back in the atrium. And on your way to the atrium, there's also a um, video photo booth set up that you can say your best wishes to Paul. That's happening in the private dining room, uh, as well as there's a guest book there if you haven't signed or want to drop your card off to him in the atrium as well. Uh, last but not least, you will hear when it is time to gather again. We'll have a ne our next act start right away, so listen in for that. You're welcome to find a new spot or stay where you're seated afterwards. But without further ado, I'll welcome Marcus up to share a few words. Well, thanks to all the, uh, the acts that have performed so far. Let's give them all a hand. I did, I did, before I get into this, I did want to clarify one thing. We had a song about living a good life so that you can hold your head 
up when you die. And we, we had a song uh, uh, about um, maybe saying goodbye for the last time. The barbershop guys sang a song about uh, being on a boat to heaven. <laughs> And we also had a, a, a skit where God called. And I just, <laughs> just so everyone's clear, he's just retiring, right? <laughs> he's gonna live up the road half a block. We'll still see him, okay? <laughs> Paul, uh, you know, I've, I've given so many little speeches commemorating your retirement over the last uh, few months that I, I think it's getting to both of us. I even. <laughs> I, I even sang to you at the Christmas banquet a while back, so, but I won't do that tonight. But this is gonna be the last, the last speech. Um, <clears throat> sometime uh, before, just, just around the end of the pandemic, uh, Paul came to me with this idea for an art illustration, uh, installation rather. Uh, we just finished this dining room uh, expansion and Paul thought we needed a finishing touch. And I'll admit that I was a little skeptical <clears throat> when Paul described what he envisioned. He said, I know this, this artist, he's a Grable alumnus, and he does these color, colorful sculptures with flywheels and spinny things, uh, and they look cool. And I thought, and he said, you know, we could put it in the dining room over the, the fireplace. And I thought, well, you know, maybe we could find a place that's less uh, prominent. I didn't know, I couldn't envision what he was talking about. But I was also intrigued because Paul has this reputation for frugality and practicality, and yet here he was asking for this abstract art piece that sounded kind of whimsical and maybe even a little expensive. <laughs> so we raised some funds and we signed a commission agreement, and the result is that piece of art right over there. It's above the fireplace. It's called We Are All Engines of Joy uh, by the artist James Patterson. And describing the work, Patterson said this, quote, I believe that we were made for joy and that out of that joy comes our desire to create. And to be creative means to participate in bringing things together. So I've sometimes talked about that piece as a visual representation of the college itself. If you look closely, you can find suggestions of music and peace and history there. And you can see students. They almost look like sails at the top. Uh, they're going out into the world. But tonight, I'd, I'd invite you to think about how this piece expresses Paul's life work, his vocation, the whole meaning of his career, and I can't look at him now because he's now, he's gonna cry and I'm gonna cry too. <laughs> Paul uh, has spent well over three decades keeping the wheels spinning here at Grable, applying energy and heart and spirit, making sure that all the gears and belts stay connected so that the whole thing hangs together and works. Nelson Shifley hired Paul back in 1988 to be the business manager. Nelson was vice president of administration at that time, and I think he's here in the room. Can you wave? Yeah. So let's, uh, let's take a moment to, to congratulate Nelson on what turned out to be a pretty good hire 60, 36 years ago. Prior to working here, Paul was a resident student and he served as the student col college president one year, and during that time, the college changed its toilet paper supplier to save money. <laughs> uh, and this is from Nelson, this is Nelson's memory. Paul, as the student council president, met with Nelson to demand uh, better quality toilet paper <laughs> on behalf of the students. This will be ironic to recent students. Uh, um, Looking back on the controversy, Nelson reflected as follows. He said, Paul seemed ready to do whatever was necessary to improve the student's washroom experience. <laughs> I found it necessary to place an order for better quality toilet paper tissue as soon as possible. I had to admire Paul's tenacity in this matter. And the story speaks volumes because to this day, uh, 
Paul, the hallmark of Paul's work is that he believes in students and he advocates for them. And he has this heartfelt belief in the goodness of, of bringing university students together to create a welcoming, intentional community here at the college, year after year. It's good for the students because they find belonging and connection and purpose here. And it's good for the world because the world needs people who know how to create community and how to bring people together. And that's what Paul's given his whole life to. And that's why Paul has always thought expansively about his work. It's the reason why his job didn't just end at keeping the lights on. He got involved with faculty and staff and students in programs and projects. He had movie nights. He organized, helped organize the, the, the retreat. When student council had a crazy idea, Paul would at least listen, if not help out. <laughs> Paul told me many times uh, when I arrived here that the purpose of operations is to make sure that programs happen and that people come together and that we show hospitality to everyone who lives and works and visits here. He was occasionally criticized for being overly frugal or cheap. <laughs> and he knew that. He heard that. He told me that he erred on the side of frugality because every dollar spent on operations was a dollar that didn't go towards programs or students. So he wanted to be careful with the funds we had. The chairs in our new private dining room are old chairs from our boardroom. I'm guessing they're at least 30 years old. The hydraulics can fail unexpectedly, <laughs> causing the person to, who's sitting in the chair to suddenly lose altitude. <laughs> when a meeting is dragging on, it's fun to guess which chair will give out. <laughs> and that's thanks to Paul. But let's not forget that Paul's attitude is one of the reasons why Grable is in better financial shape than many colleges and universities right now, and that's also thanks to Paul. Let's also remember that Paul's approach to his job could have a personal cost. He often took responsibility for things that another person might delegate to others. So if an alarm went off in the middle of the night, or if a pipe burst on a Sunday afternoon, Paul would come to deal with it. There was a lot of truth in that skit that Marionette and, and Sherry did. A few years ago, an unfortunate squirrel blew out our electrical transformer, <laughs> and that caused a power failure. Paul was on vacation, and I was really excited because I saw an opportunity that we could deal with something without Paul's involvement. <laughs> but by the time I got from my office to the front desk, which isn't far, Paul was already on the phone instructing people on what to do. <laughs> Let's take a moment to thank Dolores and the Penner kids for all of the vacations and beach days and Sunday afternoons that were interrupted by calls and emails from Grable. We're all engines of joy, all of us. I think that's true. I think we all have it in us. We all have that capacity. We don't always remember it, and we don't always do it consistently. Not all of us. There are engines, and then there are engines. Paul is a diesel locomotive. <laughs> Here at Graybolt, Paul, we'll always remember you as a mighty engine of joy. Paul, do you want to come up and say a few words? Wow. <laughs> Did you know that you left us here? <laughs> oh, that's, that's later. That's for later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's pretty cool. <laughs> It was, it was too tempting. It was sitting right here. I had to look. 
Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, this is a really fun evening. I'm so glad that you're all here to uh, see the talent that I've enjoyed over the years. Uh, thank you, everybody, for the touching comments. And uh, there's at least one amazing gift here. I'm guessing there's more than one. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, so th this is a, a great Grable party. It's also a grand way to celebrate uh, Grable's 60th anniversary. Uh, I'm going to make some remarks that some of you may have heard before in uh, different contexts. So if you are getting tired of hearing this stuff, you're going to get retired of hearing it. <laughs> <laughs> Dolores and I were just away on a little trip and she helped me think through what one would say on an evening like this. In fact, it became a bit of an interview with Dolores asking me all kinds of questions. Do other people get this too? Uh, um, so we're going to keep that format. So Dolores, you want to come up and join me and do this interview? Okay, thank you, Paul. This evening so far has been fantastic, wonderful, and really meaningful. Um, however, you probably know that Paul is someone who prefers to be at the back of the room controlling the sound and the lights and not up here being the center of attention. Paul, is there anyone in particular who you want to thank? There are lots of people I want to thank for their support. Uh, thank you to my past and present colleagues. Well, okay, I guess you're all past colleagues now. <laughs> but you get what I mean. Uh, so, to my administrative colleagues, the Grable faculty, the Grable staff, you have made it a lot of fun. That's why I stayed so long. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun. Uh, some of you are probably thinking now, we should have been less fun. He might have left sooner. <laughs> uh, to all my direct reports, custodians, office staff, and so on, thank you. If you were someone who was a staff member who reported directly to Paul, give a wave. Okay. Uh, to the 15 different duos who served as senior residents, or now we call them campus hosts, thank you. If you were a senior resident or campus host, give a wave. Yeah. <laughs> 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 To the nine different couples who served as Brubaker House Museum hosts, thank you. And some of you are here. If, you're, if you were a Brubaker House Museum host, give a wave. Uh, all of the students, especially the Dons and student council members who have contributed so much to Grable. If you were a Don, please wave. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. If you were a student council member, please wave. Uh, all of you who as students worked in a position that reported to me, such as a summer student custodian, a conference coordinator, or a co-op student, or a gardener. If you worked for Paul as a student, please wave. Thank you. <laughs> And all of you who are here today, including those who have come from a distance. If you came from more than 100 kilometers away today, please wave. Yeah, wow. And thanks, of course, to all of you who planned this event and made it happen. So Paul, why the tie? Well, kind of like what Hannah said, uh, people often ask me this question. When I first started working at Grable, I was just 26 years old. All of the people working here remembered me as a student because I had just graduated a few years before. When I was a Grable student, I was a prankster and a jokester, and I was always making jokes with the office staff and so on. So then, how do you come into that setting just a few years later as a new manager? <laughs> the idea was put on a tie and it might make them take me more seriously. <laughs> I don't know that it worked, uh, but it helped remind me that I was supposed to take it seriously. Uh, when I started joking around with the students at the lunch table or whatever, uh, and I would glance down and I would see my own tie, it was a good reminder that I needed to rein it in a bit and be a mature presence. <laughs> So you started out as the business manager and then the operations manager. When did the title change to director? 
I never wanted to be at the director level. I liked being the assistant to the director, but in 1998, I kind of got cajoled into it by John Taves. It's probably just as well because I wouldn't have applied for it if, it, if I'd had to apply for it. Uh, but it also meant that I suffered from imposter syndrome for 25 years. <laughs> and by the way, John Taves doesn't cajole. He just tells you. <laughs> People like to know the numbers. Have you got some fun facts? How many presidents have you worked for? How many term end banquets? How many community suppers? Uh, I think including interim presidents, it's 11. It's 102 term end banquets and 1,280 commie suppers. <laughs> How has the size of the building changed? Ah, when I worked here in June of 1988, there was the academic wing and there was the residence wing. There was no patio, no atrium. There was a big space between the buildings. You had to, to walk outside to get from one to the other. So the total usable area of the two buildings was just under 57,000 square feet. The total floor area now is 110,000 square feet, so almost double. How have the staff numbers changed? I'm so glad you asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> the staff complement has grown too. From, in 1988, there were 21, and now there's approximately 47. When I started, there was one custodian for each building, plus a part-time handyman. Now we have four custodians, a building operator, and a handyman. And how long exactly have you worked at Grable? I have worked at Grable 35 years and 10 months. Um, when, in 1993 to 1998, I went to a reduced load because our children are young and I wanted to have some time at home with them. And for those first 11 years, I actually commuted on the 401 from Mississauga. Can you tell us about being on call for Grable? There have been many, many calls over the years. <laughs> yeah, it's been fun. Uh, Perhaps I'm most remembered for my fire alarm response. If I was working in our yard, I could hear the fire alarm at Grable, and so I would run down the street to see if I could help. Yes, and then I'd come outside to find your lake rake lying there and wonder where you had gone. And what about those middle of the night calls? Uh, I learned to go from fully asleep to fully awake in about two seconds. <laughs> I think I usually made sense, but you'd have to check with the Dons here to see if that's true. Uh, it could be anything from floods to power outages to once keeping a student from being arrested as a vagrant because he was sleeping outside in his hammock. <laughs> Our kids have Grable to thank for the many fundraising prizes they won in elementary school. Yes, because we let them sell their chocolate bars in the staff lounge, and they would also go up and down the residence halls from room to room, begging students to buy their chocolates. Uh, and our kids loved their visits to Grable, and they loved their visits to the senior residence department because they could play video games, which they weren't allowed to play at home. Grable students were always very kind to our young kids, letting them join their teams for the all-college games at the annual retreat. And what about Grable pranks? So many. <laughs> Actually, not so many more recently, but in the old days, oh boy. Uh, the, the washroom that was turned into a swamp, complete with bulrushes in the sinks and goldfish in the toilets. <laughs> Indoor golf, where golf balls whizzed past the heads of unsuspecting students as they walked up the stairwell. <laughs> Students jumping off the patio, holding the patio table umbrellas, yelling, I am Mary Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> I had to come out and stop them, and Ed Jansen was standing right there, wa laughing. <laughs> there was the epic craft dinner prank, which is too complicated to explain, but it was epic. Uh, snowmen being assembled in people's rooms. <laughs> A waiting pool in the fourth floor lounge. The list just goes on. What about damage caused by pranks that went awry? Working with young adults is never boring. 
<laughs> I've had to enforce damage charges against students for damage caused by a live squirrel that was released into someone's room, <laughs> geese being brought into the building, a student who jumped down a flight of stairs, landing badly and hitting the door glass so hard it shattered. <laughs> Uh, a student who is sleeping in a sky bunk against the window and put their foot through the glass in their sleep. <laughs> uh, a football that crashed through a staff person's office window. The ball was thrown by the employee's child, no less. <laughs> However, it has been hugely rewarding to be a bystander watching young people grow to become mature, responsible adults even when in some cases that outcome was a little surprising. <laughs> the early part of the pandemic was a lonely time for Paulette Grable. He came in every day, but often it was just him and campus hosts Colin, Faith and Ronan in the 100,000 square foot building, as well as a few students in the apartments. When it was permitted, there were sometimes workers on the kitchen construction project who had to work at a distance from each other. The pandemic wasn't actually the first time I was all alone in the building. There was a bomb threat in 1988 that caused the evacuation of everyone on UW's campus. Grable students and staff were sent to Westmount Mall. I patrolled the perimeter of the building continuously for hours to ensure that no one broke in while the building was empty. Because it was before the days of cell phones, people had to listen to the news on their AM FM Walkmans to learn when it was safe to return. Dolores, what has it been like to be married to the director of operations? <laughs> I, don't, I, I know Mimi Brown is here. Is, Mimi, is your husband here? <laughs> okay, listen up, Sean. <laughs> Being the spouse of this fully invested director of operations has kept me on my toes. I never knew if Paul was going to announce that he promised to bake for 40 staff for the next day's coffee break, had invited 30 students over for a movie, told me not to be startled by people in our backyard because he told students to help themselves to campfire wood. <laughs> if he needed our van to haul all manner of things from couches to abandoned bicycles to supplies for the retreat, he volunteered to drive people to the airport late at night or agreed to be at Grable at 5 a.m. to meet service people. But he always said that he would do all the work involved and he did. I'm very new to this retirement thing, but in these first days, we have already identified some signs that I am retired. First of all, Paul goes to sleep without checking the lockup report. <laughs> this is a big deal. <laughs> Actually, she has, sometimes she has to whisper to me that the freezer is at minus 18, just, just so I can relax enough to go to sleep. Paul has started talking to the neighbors. I think he's missing the Grable camaraderie. It's not that I didn't talk to them before. <laughs> but now, when I see somebody walking up the street, I run out to greet them. <laughs> so if you want a conversation, just walk up the street. Paul washed the car. On a Monday. Both cars. <laughs> And the garage doors, too. It was a one-time thing. I'm not for hire. Paul now goes for hours without checking his email. On our trip to Mexico last week, Paul didn't even have his phone with him most of the time. Uh, some days, yeah. Thank you. I know. Like when you're in operations during a construction project, you can literally get hundreds of emails in a day. So that phone actually felt like it was part of my body. Paul has gone from having hundreds of potential conversation partners in the building to now having only one. <laughs> and Dolores is trying to work from home. So please accept a warm invitation to take Paul out for coffee anytime. <laughs> It would help my productivity. <laughs> Paul sings along with the oldies music at the Food Basics. Actually, I was doing that before, but now I do it really loud. <laughs> Talking about groceries, now there is unexpected stuff in the cupboard. This is what happens when a retiree goes out to shop with too much time on his hands. He doesn't stick to the list. 
I found Paul on the couch reading a book. I know. Until now, I've only read when we were away on holidays or at the beach. The couch was probably caught by surprise. <laughs> Paul watches the neighbor's house construction for hours at a time. <laughs> I think he's missing gravel building projects. It's really frustrating because they've closed it in now. I can't see what's going on inside. Paul has started watching the Leafs in real time. Oh, I used to watch on tape delay and then uh, whiz through the game in like an hour. Uh, now I watch the whole game and I even get to see the ads and so I laugh at the ads because I haven't seen them before. <laughs> and of course, I yell at the television because I know that the, since we're in real time, the Leafs can hear me. So Paul, what are you planning to do in your retirement? Travel, go to more Leafs games, relax, do projects around the house, uh, read, play more squash, enjoy more beach days, and maybe campaign for a political party that will support higher education. Any last words? I have been incredibly privileged to work for an institution that has meant so much to me. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I have to call someone up. Do I, uh, Liz, do I give this stuff now? Okay. So, Paul, uh, you can all sit down. We, um, what a surprise. <laughs> we have a really lovely photo book that, that a lot of people worked hard on, and, and a lot of people signed it. So, so, enjoy that. Take some time with it later. Lots of autographs. You're going to. You're going to put it back in the lobby, and then more people can sign it. People haven't signed it. And then this, we'd, we'd like you to open. I know it's gauche, but we'd like you to open it now. It's a frame tie. <laughs> so, so that is uh, is James Patterson's original uh, concept sketch, not a print. His original concept sketch of that beautiful uh, sculpture over there. So, thank you, Paul, for that. Now we're going to call on our our student council president, Kayla Burmaster, for a special announcement. Right. Which one do I use? This one? Okay, cool. Um, hi, Paul. Um, I didn't think about what to say, really. But um, I was told on, when was it, Tuesday? Yeah? Yeah, Tuesday. Maddie's nodding. Tuesday. That, um, well, Fred wanted the student council to make a big decision very urgently. And I said, okay, sure. <laughs> so, Mr. Paul Penner, and Mrs. Paul Penner, of course, have started the Penner Student Council Capital Endowment Fund, which is kind of like an eternal mother load, <laughs> which is all the money that we have to use for future improvements. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, this is coming from the fact that you've done so much for students. And as a student who's been a Don and lived in your house mm -hmm. and been an interim campus host and a student council president when you were taking care <laughs> of Stuco, um, I've, I've seen a lot of that firsthand. But I think what's more important is that 
when we all come into Grable, you smile and say, hi, how are you doing? And, you know, if you're me, you ask, what shows are you in right now? And uh, um, you're, you're more than just a person who manages the money around here and make sure that the building's not leaking too much or falling apart too much. Um, <laughs> you're our friend. Yeah. And so, I have to grab a prop. I'm happy to announce on behalf of the Student Council that we are giving you $5,000 to the Penner Student Council Capital Endowment Fund. Thank you to my VP who drew this. I'll just put this back there now. So the idea was to uh, give the student council a fund that they could draw from every year to make improvements uh, around the facility to enhance student life and so on. So that's something that Paul, uh, that Dolores and I set up. Uh, and uh, thank you for your contribution to it. That's wonderful. Thank you for doing that for us. Mm. <laughs> well, just. Uh, trying to build on the buzz as you notice in the uh, uh, program here we are accepting donations to this fund and if you'd like to add to this endowment fund please see Allison over at the merch table and we have a great selection of Paul Penner's old Grable wear donations of twenty dollars or more you get your pick of a Grable wear uh, that that you may like to fit into I don't fit into this one anymore but uh, there, you there you go thanks so much for uh, for being part of this uh, we we love to have Grable's uh, People like you, Paul, invest in this place in so many ways. So thanks for being part of this. We're going to have a short intermission, get some more treats, mix and mingle, and get over to the table and make a donation. Thanks. One, two. A light in the room. It was you.
heaven a thousand angels stand waiting for me Whoa, take my heart and I'll lay them down my weapons break my shackles and set me We don't have a nice pitch pipe. <laughs> <laughs> also, I feel the need to say that this song was originally performed at a winter term ban- uh, fall term banquet in December. <laughs> It'll make sense in a moment. <laughs> Mm. 
Mary, did you know? And on that was, for those of you that don't know, um, the, our, our group, we always did a pentatonics cover, um, usually around Christmas time at the end of term banquet. And there were two members, Charlotte and Zoe, who weren't able to join us, but they send their love to you, Paul, too. Grable's very own pentatonics. <laughs> I love this receiving line of hugs. And this group had lots of great memories with Paul that they wanted to share. Alex notably sent a lot of those lockup reports that Paul mentioned, and he would always add a little fun fact, and Paul would reply, ha ha, EP2. <laughs> Josh has also had the chance to work with Paul as a tech coordinator. Gemma is currently working in student services. And Anna has a really unique connection, and then it goes all the way back to her parents being campus hosts. And you weren't born here, but during when your parents were campus hosts here. That's right. She, oh, you were born after, sorry. Thank you for the correction. I had some trivia questions planned, but Paul, you ruined them in your speech because so many of them I had to email Dolores and get the answers for her. And she had them already because you had been collecting them. But I do have one trivia question um, that wasn't covered in Paul's speech. And if you're a Grable student and get familiar with the meals around here, I wonder if you can guess what Paul's favorite Grable meal is that he's... I didn't even have to finish the question. <laughs> Nathaniel's got it. And if you're not sure what roulade is, it's a German dish, and it's a piece of rolled beef with mustard and a pickle in the middle. <laughs> not everyone's favorite, but definitely Paul's favorite. Now, this next group I have is a wonderful group of wonderful 90s wild gals who call themselves Air Supply. And they performed this talent show way back when um, but no one really asked them to get the, back ba the band back together, but nonetheless, they are here tonight. <laughs> Joining us, we have Jen, Sarah, Rebecca, Jenny, and Janice of Air Supply. Take it away. <laughs> All right, so in preparation for tonight's party, Paul made a list of 50 acts that he remembered as highlights um, from the last few decades, and we were not on the list. <laughs> but we are a determined group of old windbags, so here we are. Uh, not only did our group meet at Grable as students, but we also worked with Paul in various capacities since graduating. So Janice was a receptionist and operations assistant. Rebecca worked in the PAX office and the dean's office. Jenny was a Brubaker House host. And the one who had that snowman in my bedroom. <laughs> Sarah is director of, of finance right now, and I work in communications at Grable. So we could think of no better way to mark Paul's retirement with gusto than by raising a glass and belting out some classic tunes. Preparing for this performance was a breeze. Get ready, because this will take your breath away. <laughs> Paul, you are an inspiration, so please enjoy our exhalations. <laughs>
one other amazing piece um, and we're gonna play it through twice you're welcome to sing with us if you know it for the second round um, the words are may God grant you a blessing and the last line can be we love you Paul wasn't on Paul's list. That was amazing. I enjoyed it. And I, it, it really did take my breath away. <laughs> Lots of gusto. Thank you, Jen, Sarah, Janice, Jenny, and Rebecca. Dolores came up to me over the intermission and said, why are our names on the program? We do not have anything planned. So Paul, before you sit down, I'm gonna get you to stay and have Dolores come join us here at the front. And, and while you're doing that, I'm gonna ask both of you to take your shoes off. <laughs> Paul's giving me a really weird look. But he does this to staff apparently all the time. When we started planning this, you know, there's lots of coffee breaks and things like that. And Paul apparently loves playing the shoe game. And so if you haven't seen this, it's a popular wedding or clearly coffee break. So Paul even knows what to do. He's like, give me one of your shoes. You'll trade shoes. Then we're going to have you stand back to back. And we'll do a quick test question here. And so you put up the shoe for the person that is an answer this question, OK? Who is more likely to cry during a sad movie? And, and so clearly we've got this one right. We've got both, both, oh wait, no, Dolores, was that? No, that was Paul's shoe. This is confusing. They both wear black shoes. Not helpful. Dolores has the no back on hers, so maybe flip that one around if we can. OK, perfect. All right, next question. Who has the bigger wardrobe? Oh, Dolores, that would shock me with all the ties. You both said Dolores, so you know. Ties don't take up a lot of space. Okay. We've had some ice cream here tonight. Who is more likely to have ice cream for breakfast? Oh, wow. Dolores is more likely to have ice cream for breakfast, even in retirement, Paul. You're allowed to. I haven't been retired that long. <laughs> He's still figuring it out. Who has more siblings? Oh. <laughs> I guess, I guess <laughs> That was a little bit confusing for one that I thought would be a little bit tricky, but I wanted to call out some of the wonderful family you have in attendance here tonight. So Paul has his mom Marie and her partner Vic. He has his sister Christine and Robert from Quebec City. 
his brother JD and Heather from Ajax, and his cousin Steve and Janet from Winnipeg. Thank you all for making the journey. And my stepsister Swinda. Oh, yes, and step uh, stepsister Swinda. Say that five times fast. And of course, we heard from Nick and his partner Sam earlier, too. All right, I've got a few more questions. we got to make this quick. Who is better at relaxing and enjoying downtime? Uh, oh. <laughs> Everyone's laughing because Dolores is stumped. <laughs> Paul thinks he's better at enjoying. Come on. Oh, okay, it's a bit of a tie here. Now I have a few on the theme of, now that you're retired, Paul, who will go to bed first? <laughs> this one has also stumped them. <laughs> Paul thinks Dolores, and Dolores, do you have a, a guess? No? You got, I, I, having lived with Paul and Dolores, I think you're pretty good at going to bed at around the same time. It's just a matter of who gets woken up in the night, clearly. <laughs> now that you're retired, Paul, who's gonna wake up first in the morning? Dolores, yeah, I, I'm not surprised. <laughs> Dolores does have to work. And last but not least, who is gonna be more likely to do the cooking now that you're retired? Yeah, yeah, Paul. Thank you for playing in the shoe game. But Dolores, I want to have you both stand up here and give a special thank you to you, Dolores. I know you've already gotten a few tonight, but you were also woken up in the middle of the night and you also lent out your van to people. You've started this fund. It's not the Paul Penner Fund. It's the Paul and Dolores Harms Penner Fund. Um, and we just want to give you a really, really small token of appreciation. So thank you, Dolores. <laughs> I'll let them go uh, get their shoes back on. Next up at Grable, uh, over the past 21 years, Grable has been known for putting on Broadway musicals. In fact, there's been 10. And throughout these productions, Paul Penner has been a great supporter. I actually learned this memory from you that he even supported the production after a radiator burst in a residence room after they left the windows open to let sets dry. And he was still supportive. Um, and so tonight, Ryan and his friends want to bring back some of those memories from musicals. So I'll hand it over to you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Anna. My name is Ryan Dunham, and uh, these are my friends. And my sister as well, but she's a friend too. There she is. Uh, we all graduated from Grable between 2019 and 2023, except Julia, but she was kind of an honorary, you know, honorary <laughs> OCR. Um, Throughout, uh, as Hannah mentioned, Grable's done a lot of musicals over the years, and Paul has been an avid supporter and attendee from coming to the shows to giving us uh, rehearsal space and storage space and all the space that he really didn't have to give us. And we are very, very appreciative. So we thought it'd be great to highlight the 10 productions that Grable has done in the time since Paul has been here. So we are gonna do a little bit of a medley showing off those shows. Now, when you're doing a musical at Grable, your cast and crew are really busy with school and midterms and jobs and often, you know, maybe commuting in from another city because they're on co-op and therefore the shows tend to be very ad hoc and last minute. So we thought how better to commemorate the musicals than by having an ad hoc and last minute talent show performance. <laughs> so, therefore tonight we want to highlight that. Um, our vocalist didn't meet our pianist till about three hours ago, so <laughs> please bear with us. Um, but just like a Grable musical, I know that this act will be a wonderful rowing success because it's a musical, a musical, and nothing's as amazing as a musical with song and dance and sweet romance and happy endings happening by happenstance. Bright lights, stage fights, and a dazzling chorus. You want to be great, then you got to create a musical. When you are sad or under a curse, your life is bad, your prospects are worse. Your wife is sighing, crying, and your olive tree is dying. Temples are growing and teeth are decaying and creditors weighing your purse. See? 
what you're told every single solitary word you bravely face adversity you're cheerful through the day you're thoughtful brave and courteous and you also have some faults but for the moment let's just say that you're a good man charlie brown you're a prince and a prince could be king with a heart such as yours you can open any doors you can go out and do anything you could be king charlie brown you could be king i've never been a man who lived an office life I've never been a man behind a desk I've always been a man who said that staying still was playing dead The kind that's looking forward to the challenges ahead People say that's irresponsible People tell me stay at home But I'm not made for things like mowing lawns or apron strings I'm my best when not at rest so I fight the dragons and I storm the castles and I win a battle or two then comes the day it's time I'm packing up and I am bringing all my stories home to you
it's only in Eden grows a rose without a thorn and your children start to leave you on the day that they are born they will leave you there to cheer for them they will leave you there to mourn ever so like an ark on uncharted seas their lives will be tossed and the deeper is your love for them the crueler is the cost and just when they start to find themselves is when you fear they're lost oh but you cannot close the acorn once the yoke begins to grow and you cannot close your heart to what it feels and needs to know that the heart is part of love and the trail is part of love and the truest part of love love is letting go What words of wisdom can I give them? How can I help to ease their pain? Now they must learn from one another Day by day much 10 incredible musicals over paul's going to continue his receiving line but we're going to invite all of our other acts to come up and join us for a true finale and while they're coming up and getting reset i want to invite you to stick around and mingle with paul after this last song um, i feel like a bit of a dawn saying this though but it would be really helpful if we could take the party to the comfy chairs in the atrium afterwards it's a great place to hang out with paul uh, and we'll make sure that you get to say farewell to him there in the atrium. It'll allow the rest of our cleanup crew to get going. So while we'll invite everyone come up for one last act, a finale of some sorts. Uh, Dan suggested this one uh, for us all to do um, because uh, we're, we're going to do Crosby, Stills, and Nash and Young, our house, because this is kind of your house, Paul. No. <laughs> I'll light, light the, the fire. fire. You placed flowers in the vase that you bought today.
just five minutes, everything is done. Such a cozy room, the windows are illuminated by the evening sunshine through them, fiery gems for you. you brought Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. And while we have you standing, we have a tradition here at Grable, so I invite you to take a knee. And if you can, join us. Paul, please stay standing. You know what this is about. We love you, Paul. Oh, yes, we do. 